The term sacbut, the name of the early trombone, comes from the French sacbut, meaning pull, push, sacbut. Oh, hello there. Good afternoon. This is Instrument Petting Zoo, part of Gwinnett County Public Libraries. Our county has so many cities in it. We have so many different kinds of people in Gwinnett County. I was just reading how we have so many different kinds of instruments. I think I hear one now. Is that a flute? Let's check it out. That was beautiful. I thought I heard a flute playing. How are you today? What was your name? Hi, I'm Therese and I work at the Tequila Branch. Therese, that's a beautiful name. And this is, that was a beautiful piece, one of my favorite pieces of music. And we might actually get to hear that pretty soon. And these are different kinds of flutes. What are these different kinds of flutes? Well, these are actually both C flutes. Oh. Um, a couple of different options for the C flute. You can see that this one has holes in the keys and this one doesn't. And this one has all the keys in a straight line, and this one, they're offset a little bit. This is more of a beginner flute. When you first start to learn to play the instrument, you'll probably start on one like this. Um, and this flute also has more keys than this one, so this one can play an extra note. That's actually good to know. I probably started on one of those and then I quit, which is very unfortunate. And what kind is this? Does it play higher? This is a piccolo, and you see it's less than half the length of a regular flute, so it's a lot higher, and I can show you how that sounds. It's also that. made out of wood, so it has a little bit of a warmer tone, and these are made out of metal. This one is sterling silver, and this one is nickel. Wow. And you've been playing for how long? I started playing in the sixth grade band, so... Wow, so it's while. been a minute. <laughs> and I already told you, I uh, did not continue with my flautist career. What would you give new learners advice continuing on in the flute? I would say be patient. It takes a long time to master a new instrument, but it's definitely worth all the time and effort to be able to make music. Beautiful. Well, thank you so much, Therese. Hopefully one day some new flute player will also be able to play that wonderful, beautiful piece. Thank you. So what is your name and what instruments do you play? Well, my name's Adam. Um, I work at the Lawrenceville branch. Um, I, play the, I play a few instruments, actually. I play the clarinet and also the alto and tenor saxophone. Awesome. How long have you been playing these instruments? Um, for a long time, actually, um, since I was in about the fifth grade. I actually started clarinet, though, a little later, about seventh grade. Wow. So you can start a little later and still be pretty proficient at these. Yeah, it's good to works. hear. And how did these instruments work and how do they sound? Well, the clarinet, um, well, they're both pretty similar. Um, they're both woodwind instruments. Um, so they have a mouthpiece and a reed, which um, produces the, the noise. Um, and then it's, it's just a column of air, basically like any other wind instrument. Um, with a clarinet, it has um, these holes that are called tone holes. Um, you just cover them with your uh, fingers. And it also has some keys with pads on it, which also seals um, the tone holes. Um, and the, basically, the more you press down, the lower the pitch. Um, and the more you don't have your fingers on there, the higher the notes. <laughs> so it's kind of like... Beautiful. And the clarinet, one of my favorite pieces, Peter and the Wolf, is played on clarinet, one of my favorite instruments. And you said these are woodwind, so a saxophone, that looks kind of metallic. That looks actually like brass to me. Yeah, but it's not part you. of the brass, it's a woodwind. Right, yeah, the saxophone, so this is an alto saxophone, and um, so it's made of brass, so you would think it's a brass instrument, right? But no, it's actually a woodwind because of the wooden reed. Um, and the, the mouthpiece is actually very, very similar to the clarinet's mouthpiece. Um, but unlike the clarinet, it doesn't have like holes that you press with your fingers so much. It's actually keys that have pads on it like this, and that's what covers the holes. Um, so yeah, being brass, it's a little bit um, brighter and louder, I think, than the clarinet. So I'll just play a few notes so you can see what that sounds like. This is the alto, so it's going to be a little higher than the tenor. <laughs> Perfect. So when you said tenor, I would have thought that would have been higher, but alto is actually higher. Yeah, alto um, is higher, just like um, 
with um, singing voices, like the alto part is higher and then the tenor is a little bit lower. There's actually a few different instruments in the saxophone family, uh, several actually. Um, soprano is a, isn't even higher than the alto. Um, there's baritone, which is lower than this, and then there's the um, bass saxophone. Um, so oh. there's a whole family of these. It's the same with the clarinet too, but um, this is what the tenor sounds like. It sounds a little bit lower than the alto. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for letting us know that. Appreciate you showing us. Yeah, sure. Afternoon, and tell us what is your name and what instruments do you play? My name is Chase. I work at the Snowball Branch, and here today I have a violin and viola, two members of the string instrument family. Stringed instruments, very obviously. And now, which one is which, and what's the difference between these two? So right here I have with me is a violin, um, and this is a viola. The viola is a little bit bigger, and it ha has a lower range, and so the violin has a higher range, has ha has, actually has a E string. So higher range, so that you're talking about the notes. And yes. so what, how did these work? And how did they sound? Yeah, so essentially um, the strings vibrate on top of the instrument. It sits on top of a fingerboard and the strings vibrate. And here at the bridge, it vibrates here. And then since the instrument is hollow, it resonates inside. Very cool. We'd love to hear some of that if you sure. want to play us anything. Beautiful, one of my favorites. And this is a stringed instrument that took you how long to master, would you say? How long to get to the level you are at now? Sure. So I've been playing, this is my 14th year, actually. So 14th I started right year. about elementary school. Beautiful. And would someone need to practice since they were a little kid to get really good at this? Not at all. Um, I, I know many of people that have started later on in life. And so it's usually good to start in the beginning, but you can always learn music later on in life. Beautiful. What advice would you give new learners? So essentially, my advice would be is if you really want to learn, just go find somewhere to take lessons and then, you know, learn from someone that actually knows how to play the instrument. That's very good advice, actually. Wonderful. And so what about you? What do you play? Thanks for asking. I, actually, I play guitar, so stringed instrument as well, a um, little bit different. Um, I had a couple friends that played, so they kind of got me into it. Um, this is, so this is a normal acoustic guitar. And uh, instead of doing kind of what yours does, there's a sound hole where all the sound comes in, kind of amplifies and then goes back out. So that's where you get that. Um, I really enjoy playing the acoustic guitar because a lot of kind of popular songs in different genres, especially the Latin dance genres, use an acoustic guitar. Um, it's a pretty classic instrument. Um, and I think for myself, one of my favorite parts is, is just kind of simple strumming. I think it's really fun to do. For me, it took me a while, so I would actually always just advise anyone who's picking up guitar, just hang with it until you get those calluses, because it's a little uncomfortable. But if you keep playing until just past the point when you're uncomfortable, you start to really develop some real finger strength and some calluses, and then it gets really fun. And I would actually also just advise someone, pick up a song you really enjoy already that's pretty simple on guitar. Yeah, and I can definitely relate to that with the calluses. Exactly, yeah. Good afternoon. Can you please give us what is your name and what instruments do you play? Yes, um, my name is April and I actually work over at the Lawrenceville branch. I play the trumpet and I've, I've played it for about 11 years. Um, so basically what we've, we've got here today, I brought you three different types of trumpets. There's actually very many types of trumpets, but these are the three that are, I think, a lot of fun. And th they look the diff like very different, as you can see. So this one here is actually called a B-flat trumpet. Um, the way we actually play it is we blow air through the mouthpiece and it goes through all of this tubing and comes out the bell. So what makes the sound is actually the length of tubing. Hmm. So the longer it is, the deeper it is. Oh, so the piccolo is gonna sound a little higher because it looks a little shorter. Yes. Whereas the flugelhorn here, it actually has the same length as the B-flat. So it'll have the same range, but it'll have a deeper sound simply because of the way that it's made. I like that. Definitely looks like it would be deeper. And can we hear anything? This is the standard trumpet, yeah, the B-flat. definitely. Perfect. Let's hear some. Awesome. 
that always reminds me of the wake up call, the beagle, the morning song. <laughs> yep. Perfect. And since that's a lot of breathing and probably a lot of technique a decade <laughs> later, over, over a decade later, what would you give for advice for anyone learning the trumpet? Uh, for anybody learning, um, definitely, I would definitely have somebody that knows how to play to kind of help you because the whole, a lot of the technique is here in your embouchure is what we call it, where you hold your lips. Um, so you need somebody to kind of help you build that technique. But the biggest thing we do to make the sound is make a buzzing sound with your lips. So mm -hmm. as long as you can go with your lips, it should, you should be able to make a sound. And from there, it just keeps getting way more fun. So awesome. just keep trying. That's a great tip. Thank you so much, April. Thanks for showing us all this. How are you today? What was your name? I'm Brandon. I work out in Decula. Decula. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. I work kind of in the neighborhood. We're neighbors. Oh, yeah. And what instrument or instruments do you play? How long have you been playing them? I play the trombone and I have been playing it for 13 years since middle school. Since middle school. Mm -hmm. Marching band? Yep. Excellent. And how does this work and how does this sound? This instrument is, work, is a wind instrument and it blows wind through here and through the bell it makes the instrument loud and the lower you go, the instrument will get lower. If you go up, it'll go higher. So it's just pure wind. Not brass, very surprising. Oh, it is a brass instrument. But it's woodwind. No, no, no. This is all brass. This is a true brass, mm -hmm. not like those confusing other ones that Adam showed us. Yep. All brass. Perfect. Why don't you give us a sample? Yep. Very good. That always sounds a little bit like a kid's book to me or something like that. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. It's a very unique, fun instrument. <laughs> very fun. I like the sound of it. And what would you give for advice for our friends who are maybe wanting to pick up trombone? What would you say is, is good advice for them to start? Uh, I would say if it's comfortable with you playing, just have fun with it. That's the best advice you can have. Perfect. I love it. Well, thank you so much, Brandon. Thank you. Afternoon. Can you give us your name and dare I ask what instrument you play? My name is Nick. I uh, work at the Hamilton Mill Branch and uh, this is a saxophone. Saxophone. Very Just kidding, it's actually drums. Oh, thank you for a second. You're welcome. Yeah. I didn't know. And how long have you been playing the drums? <sighs> Going on maybe 13 years now, somewhere around there. Um, honestly, it's just been a long time. I really don't know. <laughs> but over 10 years, over a decade for sure, there are a lot of pieces, obviously, to a drum set. Can you tell us how it works and then maybe show us how it works? Sure. So there are obviously all these parts you see are drums and cymbals. Uh, this is a snare drum. These are called tom-toms. Uh, this is a bass drum. This is a ride cymbal, a crash cymbal, and then hi-hats. Uh, but basically it's just a shell, wood or metal, depending. Uh, they do have different tonal qualities to them. Uh, but essentially it's a drum, uh, and then you put two heads on top, one on top, one on bottom. Uh, and then depending on how you tune them, tight or loose, uh, they sound different. So this is a snare drum. Beautiful, and I think the moment we've all been waiting for. Can you play us a little something to give us a sample of how it all works together? Sure. That's amazing. Now, you've been going 13 years, so I'm sure a lot of this is automatic for you. What would you tell someone who's just picking up the drums? Someone who's just starting out, um, I would recommend finding somebody, obviously, who's... <laughs> play it for a little bit so they can show you the right way to hit things, obviously, because you can see if you don't hit things properly, you will break them. Um, but other than that, I mean, just find some songs you like playing to and just have fun. Yeah, that's, that's it. Seems like a fun instrument. Oh, it is. You want to try? Perfect. Definitely. After this. <laughs> Thank you, Nick. Perfect. Of course, yeah. Have a good one.